We all misbehave sometimes Wanna change the world Indulge in some bad Welcome to the Bad Behaviour Podcast, where we talk about badass women, activism and positive change. And of course, our journey to becoming the best, baddest bitches that we can be. I'm Rosalind. I'm in Melbourne, Australia right now. I'm here with Nicola, who is... Tell tell us where you are, Nicola. Hi, everyone. Um, My name is Nicola and I'm currently in New York City. Yeah, so (laughs) we are starting this podcast because there are a lot of names that don't get said enough and a lot of stories that don't get shared. Yeah, we want to celebrate women's achievement, hence the name Bad Behaviour. So bad is talking subversive, rebellious, challenging the status quo. Yeah, it's like, you know, those sneaky, cheeky women that you've always admired. We want to have a conversation, an empowering conversation, may I add, about our journey to becoming the kind of women that we admire. So we've decided that every week we're going to ask this question as a sort of check-in kind Mm -hmm. of little question. Nicola. Yes, Rosalind. How have you been bad this week? How I've been bad this week. So I had to have a good think about what I'd done to give a general fuck you to the patriarchy this week and, you know, society's unattainable standards for women. So (laughs) I was at a dinner party and there was a range of people and there was some really young boys like year seven so like I, 12 yeah so 12 years old and we were talking and we got on to talking about doctor who and you know how they just announced that the new oh there's a female doctor who now. yes so i was asking them what they thought of it and they were really not keen like these were two private school educated young men who were telling me that the role of the doctor Doctor, the fact that it had gone to a woman was it was taking it away from men when it should have been oh given God. to men. So you best believe that I teach sa- a meninist. Yeah, there. no, because intervention, Rosalind. What's the difference yeah. between a meninist and just a young, a nice young lad? Is well, it's a conversation with Nicola. I oh, assume. get ready for it, because I <laughs> sat them down, and you best believe that I gave them a nice little talking to, not in a mean way, in like a hey. I'm your friend. Let's converse kind of way. Yeah, and I'm here I, to educate. <laughs> yeah, I'm here to pass on my wisdom, what little of it I have. They were actually really cool to talk to. I felt like I was making a tiny shred of difference. Did it end up at the end that they had different views on Doctor Who? I don't want to say that they had different views on, like, the role of women or, like, their already really Yeah, it was a short conversation. Gender role. <laughs> it really was, you know, between dinner and dessert. But they were not going to watch the show when it aired and I convinced them to watch it. So if that's... Well, that's a small step. And Well done, you. Oh, stop it. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, my question to you now, Rosalind, is oh, how I have you what been bad this week? Yeah. This one's a little bit similar, actually. So I think everyone knows Tinder. It's a yes. dating app. Okay, I've come across something on Tinder that kind of gets my back up it's Mm. definitely a pet peeve now some guys get really annoyed when you are the first person to talk to them or if you you know you get to a point in the conversation and you think to yourself I cannot keep up this fun flirty person over text I'm not great over text I need to meet them in person let's not stay in cyberland forever absolutely but they get annoyed when you ask them out or they get put off and it's kind of like oh this woman's very aggressive so for the longest time I wasn't doing it I would wait for them to talk to me I would wait for them to ask me out and then if the conversation got to maybe two days and they hadn't asked me I'd sort of write it off and go oh well that didn't work out but recently I've been thinking about it and that's such a bad attitude to have don't I want to get with the guy who's okay with it that's who I am I'm a very forward kind of honest straight talking person so I've completely scrapped that now if I'm interested I'll ask I will talk to you first that I don't care if you don't answer me or you get put off by it or you make a comment about how oh I've never been asked out by a woman before oh lord I'm just gonna say no I've got to get my priorities straight that's my thinking at the moment oh Rosalind fucking preach it that is brilliant if anyone gets scared about if a man gets scared about a woman asking them out I feel like that is the first of many bad 
things to come. Like that is, yeah. if if that is the thing that scares you about a woman being in charge, then fucking, <laughs> you better hold on. Well, it's just, we're not taught to ask people out, are we? No, the, it seems to be that this, you just, you learn from a young age that the way dating works is to wait for them to make the move. Yeah. You kind of broadcast your interest in various ways, trying not to seem too slutty or too prude, and then eventually they ask you out. It's like this little dance. Game achieved. Fuck that. And good on you. You keep asking them boys out, baby girl. You keep doing (laughs) it. Our topic this week is travelers and explorers it means a lot to us actually because the foundation of our friendship is like the fact that we've both traveled a lot I remember when I first met you you told me about third culture kids I've grown up overseas Rosalind Nicola's lived in Mongolia she's lived in the UAE she lived in Bali yeah I've I've, I've been just helping you out (laughs) telling your life story (laughs) thank you so much but we've both traveled quite a bit and it's I've spent all my money on traveling yeah I save up and then I travel that is my entire life it is such an important part of my life very privileged to live a life where I can actually save up and then just go on these huge ass trips there's something amazing about broadening your experiences through just leaving and then coming yeah, back again. It's incredible. So <laughs> then back again. We chose this topic because we it's very it sits very close to our heart. Rosalind, I'm wondering, will you share your I, amazing I woman? Okay, so I mean, there are a lot of people to choose. I decided to choose Belinda Kirk. Belinda is an English adventurer, expedition leader, scuba diver, rower, camera woman, fellow of the Royal Geographical Society. She's a Guinness World Record holder and an activist. Shit. Yeah. Uh, this this woman, okay, when I was researching her, I spent most of my time going, no, you didn't do this. You didn't. You don't have this much stuff packed into one little lifetime, surely. It's easier to list where she hasn't been. Oh, wow. You know, she's been across Europe and Africa. She's hiked through the Rockies and the Alps and the Taklamakan Desert in China. She's run expeditions through the Amazon. She's done a lot. She helped film documentaries, including the Beyond Boundaries for the BBC, which they filmed a group of people with disabilities crossing the Nicaragua, you know, took a lot of coordination and teamwork. And she's very passionate about helping people with disabilities um, have outdoor adventures. In 2017, she was named the Sunday Times Alternative Rich List, which celebrates 40 people in Britain who leave extraordinary, worthwhile and satisfying lives. Sir David Attenborough was on that. My my boy. She was the skipper of the first female crew to row nonstop around Britain. What? Which is like 51 days journey. And she has managed remote trips for a number of people on Adventure TV. But I got really excited about the fact that she managed remote f- film shoots for Bear Grylls. Whoa. Yeah. I don't know if if that's an American thing to watch Bear Grylls. Bear Grylls he's is like fucking a, cool. He's yeah, amazing. he's an adventurer who goes out and does crazy stuff. She's just really cool. And in terms of activism, she's run expeditions for the British Exploring Society, which is a youth development charity. She founded the Explorers Connect charity, which is a community of over 25,000 people who it's open from beginners to experienced explorers to link them with people they can go on explorers with or jobs or new adventures they can do. She set up... Britain's National Day of Adventure, which is Wild Night Out, which encourages people to get outdoors for one night every year, raising money for the Youth Adventure Trust, which is trying to help disadvantaged people have develop skills and confidence. And so she's done a lot. Absolutely. I have a quote. She said, I'm on a mission to make adventure more accessible, to bring about societal change that brings us closer to the natural world, to challenge, to risk and to each other. Oh, Belinda. It's interesting. You know, because I'm so interested in environmental conservation. I talk about it a lot, but I don't really get out into nature very often. And Belinda talks about in a couple of interviews that I read, she talks about our changing relationship with nature. And I think that's really true. I don't know a lot of people my age who are really adventurous in that way. Maybe we should be more adventurous in that way. Definitely, you would gain confidence. Oh, I think absolutely. My sister did one where she went out for. 11 days or something and did a hike and came back a completely different person. It's it's amazing. Traveling changes you. I feel like especially traveling when it's very raw, like yeah. doing something with your body, like hiking, and it's very minimalist, like that always, that has been a point of interest to me for so long. Like these, yeah. when you hear of these really cool journeys where people just 
go out into the wild and to be honest I admire people who do it I find it fascinating I watch you know I've seen Naked and Afraid that (laughs) tragedy (laughs) reality show where they go into the you know wild I am not a camper I'm not that's okay I'm more of a have a cup of tea on the deck than (laughs) have a cup of tea in a tent (laughs) damp forest kind of thing yeah but maybe i should change it she's made me want to go hiking so that's a good whoa belinda (laughs) shit girl you this if belinda's made you want to go hiking then like we all need to hike (laughs) for belinda who who did you choose okay so my woman she is also fucking cool her name is cecily skog and I hope Ooh. I'm pronouncing that right. It's spelled C E C I L I E, Cecily. That's how I'm going to say it. So I apologize if that's incorrect. But she. <laughs> Let's just say a blanket apology from now. If we fuck up names yes. or places or anything, we apologize. Yeah. <laughs> blanket is st- like, Sorry about statement. that. Yeah. So she is the first woman to conquer the seven summits and both poles, which was already pretty woe incredible she's a norwegian adventurer and she's the only woman in the world to have reached the north pole the south pole and then the summit of everest so she grew up with a love for all things outdoors she's got a multitude of amazing experiences behind her because she was a mountain guide and a glacier expert which I didn't even know there was such a thing as a glacier expert but that is really cool (laughs) I mean there's experts in everything whenever I think of mountaineer guide I think of St. Bernard dogs and that makes me really happy so yeah (laughs) well this woman's about to make you really happy too just with how she lives her life so she (laughs) she worked as a nurse but since since she climbed Everest she put that to the side and now she works as a professional adventurer which I thought was such a cool cool job title so she's like a guide and a lecturer and they have this word in Norwegian that's called real luftsliv and it means outdoor life and it's this outdoor life that people should seek and she has always had such a huge passion for it and that's kind of what direction she's led her life in seeking this fulfillment through that so in 2008 she was one of 31 climbers from eight separate international expeditions to set off for the ascent of k2 in north pakistan and she was with k2 is that a is that a mountain yeah so she was with her husband rolf bay and they were both he was a wait rolf bay yeah like bay like ma bay b-a-e yeah that is Int- that's so funny <laughs> yeah he's- i shouldn't laugh his name but i love that yeah <laughs> this is my bay rolf bay <laughs> sorry go on <laughs> um, so they were both really accomplished climbers and they'd actually met on a mountain in mount elbrus in russia they in met on a mountain yeah isn't that beautiful i want to uh, meet someone on a mountain uh, well we gotta get up there bro we gotta get <laughs> we gotta up gotta to, go to a mountain. <laughs> yeah step one go to mountain oh, gosh. step yeah. two meet yeah, bay yeah. meet rolf bay like like, come yeah. on. But so she, they married in 2007, but unfortunately they, 11 climbers were killed by an ice avalanche <gasps> that day oh and God. Rolf was one of them, which oh. is horrible. So they were climbing it together and he decided to stay down at base camp and she continued the ascent because I think he wasn't feeling unwell. And then on the way back down, on their descent down the mountain, an avalanche, uh, ice avalanche came and it killed 11 of the the 31 climbers. So it was a huge tragedy. It was horrible and just incredibly difficult for this woman had forged her life climbing with this person that she loved so dearly. And she is quoted saying, it's very easy to sit here and say, we should not have done it, but I'm glad that Rolf was able to live the life he did. One thing that he taught me, you should not just sneak after your dreams. You should grab them with both hands and hold them really tight and try to live them, which I thought was fucking brilliant. That is such, she has such a beautiful attitude despite someone should make a film of her life definitely think that would be translate amazing. <laughs> write that down somewhere next project <laughs> take note yeah so she oh, that's beautiful despite this horrible tragedy in january 2010 she finished the first unassisted unsupported so it completely human powered cross 
of the Antarctic. So she was with this wow. one of her friends called Ryan Waters, and they cross-country skied for 70 days for more than oh my God. 1,800 kilometres. She... And I think I would not manage an hour. Oh, <laughs> you know, tap me out at 10 minutes, babe. Like yeah. this woman did 70 days and it was completely unassisted and it was the journey was unprecedented. It opened a new chapter in Antarctic history and she just showed how much she could thrive in spite of horrible personal tragedy. So she is quoted saying, Rolf is gone, but not my dreams. And I hold oh. on to those dreams really tight and I, I still dream about dr- sleeping in Tense journeys, blowing wind, and moments that make me feel really alive. Climbing in thin air and crossing poles is a very male-dominated affair. To keep up with the boys, I train a lot in order to be thoroughly prepared. This has paid off both mentally and physically. She's a fucking boss ass bitch like she's she is definitely a boss yeah she's incredible and I was really interested in her because I the way that people deal with grief is really interesting and it's always so amazing to see how people thrive in spite of humans are so resilient yeah and I think everybody you know you get to a certain age and all kind of experience some form of tragedy in your life to a small or large degree you know but going through something like that and then sort of turning it around and saying hey I'm still going to do what I love is so powerful yeah I admire that and she's using his mem- the memory of him too to kind of push her forward. I just think she's so... Um, Which they would have wanted. He absolutely would have. She actually... Yeah. I wrote down this fun fact. She was, was on the Norway version of Dancing with the Stars, which is oh so my cool. God. It's like... That's my dream. It's well, like... Not the Norway version. This gal scales mountains and then comes down and does a cha-cha. Like, excuse oh. me, I literally have issues getting up when my alarm goes off and you just jump out of bed and completely dominate the world. You don't know that. She might not be a morning person. Oh, she may. I suspect she is, but she might uh, not. You know, those those mountain climbers, they always strike me as morning people. I feel like you've got to be a morning person to want to climb a mountain. Yeah. Is that a weird thing to think? Maybe we can change the status quo. Maybe we'll just climb the mountains in the nighttime, Rosalind. We'll just get up. I feel like that sounds really dangerous and boring. It does. Because you won't see anything. Well, that and m- you climb them really, really late. So, like, you climb them at, like, 5. No, that's morning. I was going to say 5 a.m. Like, you climb them at, like, 2 a.m. And by the time you've reached the top, it's a sunrise. That so is the definition of a morning person. See, the thing is, I would just you get not up early to, to see sleep. the sunrise. That's not... Well, I... That's not an... A night owl. Well, I just wouldn't sleep. That's the thing. I would just literally stay awake until the morning. Okay, I'm not sure about this plan, but I've very much enjoyed hearing about this amazing woman. Yes, so I have her Instagram is at S K O G C E C I L I E. She posts really amazing pictures and she has adorable children. When Ever I see her pictures on Instagram, it's inspiring. Like, it makes yeah. you want to be like, yes, I yeah, want to fucking okay. crush this we, day. We've got two really inspiring women here. Yes. Both of us have now said we would we would hike, which is not Whoa. something we... Uh, Cecily and Belinda, shout out to you girls yeah. for getting these two lazy bitches out of the house. I will put a link to the Explorers Connect website and some of and Belinda's website as well up on our website, which is badbehaviorpodcast.com. So check that out. We'll put all the links there so you don't have to remember. Yes. Them. And thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you can shoot us an email at badbehaviorpodcast at gmail.com. It's spelled behavior is spelled the American way. We're sorry, Australian yeah. fans. <laughs> if there's any topics you would like us to, to discuss or if you think that we fucked up in any way, Way. Or if you had some badassery that you'd like to share with us, we would love to hear your stories about how you or someone you know has been, quote, bad. So thank you so much for listening to, to our very first episode. Oh, yes. We will be back next week with some more really cool anecdotes and badass women.